Okay, so many of you may not know, but the Red Cross is experiencing the worst flood shortage in over a decade. With the blood supply being so low, hospitals have had to defer patients from major surgeries like organ transplants. Not to mention that every two seconds, someone in the U.S. is in dire need of some sort of blood product. Hi, my name is Nia Contreras, and my senior project is in putting in an effort to help the shortage. I wanted to help as much as I could, as this shortage is something I will face going into a job in the healthcare field. During the COVID-19 pandemic, blood donations decreased, and the number of trauma cases and elective surgeries rise despite the nation's blood supply. Over the past couple months, the Red Cross has distributed 75,000 blood products more than expected. You might wonder what classifies as blood products. Well, you think of when you're donating blood, that's whole blood, but there's also plasma, platelets, and red blood cells that make up the whole blood that you can just donate separately. Before I go any further, I would like to encourage you all, if you're eligible, to please donate any type of blood product. By donating one unit of blood, you can help save up to three lives. On the screen is the height and weight requirements for people under the age of 18. But there are other basic requirements for donating blood. You must be in good overall health. You have to have a pulse and blood pressure in the normal range. Your temperature must be normal. And your hemoglobin and iron levels have to be in the normal range. You also have to be free of all bloodborne diseases. And you can't have donated in the past 56 days. All types of blood are needed, but particularly O, since it's the universal donor. I'm going to touch on the research portion of my project, with my essential question being what is the biology behind bloodborne diseases? I learned about the most common bloodborne disease being HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C, but there are also more than 20 others. By focusing on the biology of HIV, you can see that there is, that it is a uh, retrovirus, meaning it works from back to front. They're different from other viruses because it uses RNA instead of DNA. In order to make it multiply, it needs to find a host and attach to the human cell to complete the DNA. The human cell that affects is called the CD4 cell, which runs the hu human's immune system. On the board is the structure of HIV. The most important thing to know is that if you've ever tested positive for hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or HIV, is that you should never donate blood, organs, or semen because this disease can spread to the recipient. I started volunteering back in October with Red Cross, signing in donors as they arrived at the drives. I met a lot of people willing to donate and a lot of angry people when they couldn't walk in and donate. There's some things I noticed while volunteering was that a lot more people donated during the holidays, which I thought was fascinating. And at the Manchester fixed site that I frequently would volunteer at, which is the picture all the way to the right, there tend to be almost like regulars that would come in every 56 days when they were able to donate again. I love the atmosphere overall at the drives and watching how the phlebotomist cared and interacted with the donors. I wouldn't be trying my best to help the shortage if I also wasn't contributing. I donated blood back in mid-October, mid and it was a great experience. The feeling afterward was really rewarding. It didn't go as I had hoped, as I started getting really lightheaded halfway through, and so they had to do the whole head down, be elevated to get the blood back to my head. But don't let that scare you. I was perfectly fine afterward, and just took a nap. Um, after a lot of planning with dates and such, and the help of my health science teacher, Ms. Bean, I was able to put on a blood drive at Concord High on December 1st. Our goal was to reach 25 units of blood, but we only ended up getting 17 units out of the 34 people who signed up to donate. This was due to a number of reasons that caused our drive to not run smoothly. When we first got there and started setting up, the Red Cross phlebotomists weren't able to start setting up because they're freshmen in the gym. Upon asking for administrative help, they said that there wasn't a blood drive that day but there was, so they gave us the option of letting them stay for an extra 20 minutes or canceling, canceling the drive entirely. So we decided to wait out the 20 minutes and continue with the drive. About an hour or two into the drive, one of the volunteers ended up passing out, and so we had to put a pause on the entire drive until she could leave. That was about an hour and a half after, so we had to cancel all of the appointments during that hour and a half time. Um, overall, there were a lot of deferrals, there were seven of them. 
Um, a lot of them being from low iron. One person had a high temp, one person had a high heart rate, and one person quickly passed out while donating, and so we weren't able to use their blood since it was uh, without consent. Although my drive didn't totally pan out as it had hoped, I think it still helped the shortage at some point. The lack of blood um, means life or death in a trauma situation. That's why it's so important for you to donate if you can. You never know if it's someone close to you that will need it. Thank you for listening, and thank you, Ms. Bean, for your help with the drug. Yes, that's all. Any questions? Do you want to go into the health field as an adult? Yes, Sasha.